Oh, I so appreciate that. Thank you. Um, and so, so I recently reached out to the, the to this past client and I said, how's everything going? He said, we're all doing great, except for Jasper, one of his dogs, who was not doing well. Well, over the course of three weeks, I'd sent a get well card and he kept me updated. And we've, we've built that connection back because I was concerned about his dog. And he eventually, unfortunately, had to put his baby down um, because he, he had sarcoma and they couldn't operate on him. But um, now I've got, I'm back in touch with that past client in a very... Um, you know, kind of heartfelt way. So I know that they're thinking about me and I'm thinking about them and sending them lots of prayers right now, but I'll keep that contact going. Um, and then, and then, so, so DTD2 is like, for instance, let me share my screen and I'll get to um, Bill's email. Give me one second while I get on here. And I'm hoping I can pull it. I, I'm hoping I can pull this up. Um, some, sometimes when I'm on Zoom, I can't pull up all of my, um, my tabs. Okay, so let me get a glance. There we go. Oh, yay, okay. So can everybody see this? Yeah. Okay, so, so I really would encourage, I know a lot of people see this and they gloss over it, but this has so much good contact in for it in, in, the, in the email that Bill puts out. So um, he's got a, a link to the PC resource list. Um, this is where you report your numbers. And I'd like to encourage everybody to report your numbers, even if they are zeros right now, it'll be a place to start and it's just a good habit to get into. Um, let's, I'm going to scroll down and let me see if I can search this for the DTD2. Oh, here it is right there. The DTD2 schedule is, and I, I, you know, to be honest, I don't know what DTD2 stands for, but what basically what we do is we call, we pick two letters each week and it's systematized and we call everybody in our database or reach out and contact everybody in our database who has the last name that starts with an I or a Q, and then we text to those that are G. So, um, so these are phone calls and this is the text. Um, and it just helps us reach everybody every quarter by phone. So, because we want, we want to make sure that we talk to our people um, at least once a quarter. That's part of the 30, 36 touch. So any questions so far? Okay, so then the, the thing, and Andy Peters talks about this is to get to know people a little better. I mean, you don't wanna just call and go, hey, what's your dog's name? What's your birthday? What's your, you know, what's your kids' names? What are their birthdays? I do do that sometimes. I'm like, hey, I'm updating my database and I just wanted to get some more contact information for you. Can you share with me? And this works really well, especially if you can't remember the names of their kids. Can you share with me everybody's birthday? And then they'll be like, oh, Lauren is on the, 6th of September and Joe is on the 4th of May and that, that way you can collect and I always say and please let me know your doggies as well so the doggies birthdays um, then then when I reach out to them I have a way to say hey how's Lauren doing in college you know or how is um, how is Joe doing in in soccer and I can find out more I can call them and say you know are the kids playing sports but basically just getting to know your database really, really well so that when you reach out to them, you can reach out with something of value. Um, is, and that, that's how we start building these relationships and how we stay top of mind. Um, one of the things we can do with our database is we can offer, especially if they have, a, have a purchased a home, we can offer to set them up on a neighborhood nurture in, um, in command, or you can set them up on an auto email in FMLS that tells them what's going on in their community. So I'll share with you, I'm not gonna share with you command because I'm gonna do a class on that later, but I'll share with you FMLS right quick, how you do that. Um, people love this. My family members all have asked for this. So um, it just lets them know who's being, what's, what's going on in their neighborhood. Has a home been listed? What's coming soon? What's gone pending? What's gone under contract? Um, or, or what's gone, what's, got, what's closed? Um, if there are any price changes. So we basically go to FMLS matrix. You all are quiet this morning. 
and I'm going to go to search. And I'm just going to put in, uh, let me clear this out. For some reason, I have an autofill that I don't want. But um, I'm going to go residential detached. I'm going to select all right here. Can everybody see this? Yeah. OK, so I'm going to go select all. And I'm going to put in the community name. In this case, I'm going to put in my sister's community. Okay, so I've got three matches. I'm going to see down here, that'll tell you how many matches you have. And then I'm going to go to results. I can also go to results up here. Um, so I can see that one just closed. And it was listed at 375, closed at 375 and didn't, no closing costs. It was on the market for seven days, right there, total days on market. That's what DOM stands for. The next one I go to, um, has it's active and it's listed at 433. That's excellent. She's going to be excited about that. Um, it's been on the market for 39 days. That tells me it might be might be uh, a little bit overpriced for the neighborhood. Um, I think the homes are. I don't think anything in in the neighborhood is sold over 400. And I just know that because I watch this neighborhood all the all the time. This one was listed at 420, sold at 426, 150. No closing costs paid by seller, and it was on the market for two days. So that's excellent. Oh, this one's sold in, oh, this is in the 400s. Oh, that's excellent. Oh, she's gonna be so excited. And that just closed in May, that's good, okay. So anyway, so I'm gonna go back to the agent single line that gets me back to my list and I'm gonna select all. And then I'm gonna go down here to email. I'm sorry, I did that wrong. I'm gonna go down here to save, right here up, up on top, save. And it's gonna be a new auto email. And I'm gonna, I don't know if she's in here, if I created her as a contact or not. But I'm gonna put in, I'm gonna, I'll set myself up. And save. And now I can, uh, I've already got a contact, so let me put this in here. Anyway, you get the idea. You put in your name or you put in the person's name and I'm gonna put in, um, I put in um, what's happening in your neighborhood is the topic I would put in here. What's happening in the preserve at Etowah is the subject I would put in here. And then if I scroll way down, I can select how often they get it. So I, I can, I don't use ASAP because if somebody's a crazy realtor is up at four in the morning entering their listing and it goes live, they'll get a they'll get a text or a ping on their phone that there's an email if they have their alert set up that way and it can wake them up in the middle of the night. So I'll do all AM, anything that comes on the market in the AM and I'll do all PM. And then I always make sure that I have Line copied me a copy of all emails, especially if I'm working with somebody, I want to know what they're seeing. And um, I know I just got one this morning for one of my clients. Let's see if I can go here. Is this helpful for you all? This is called the neighborhood nurture. This is this is an auto email in FMLS. I'm going to go over neighborhood nurture in a different class. Neighborhood nurture is a command smart plan. So this is for like, say if someone, you have someone who's looking in a particular neighborhood and do you want to send out like what's coming out that day? Is that what? So, so you can also, for? you can also do um, your, your client's criteria. So say if they don't have a neighborhood particular, but they want to be in um, Alpharetta or let's say Roswell, they want to be in Roswell. Um, or, or you can put in multiple cities here. They maybe want to be in, they don't care if it's a town home or a single family home. Um, I'm going to look for them. I'm going to look for active and coming soon because they don't need to know the closed things. The, the, when, I, when I'm talking about calling your database and they have a home in a neighborhood, they're going to want to know about their neighborhood. But if you're working with a client, they're going to want to know something that's happening in their criteria. So maybe they've told me they want three, three or more bedrooms they maybe told me that their price is uh, 350 to 450, or let's say 350 to 400. 
So I've got 16 matches. So I would just do the same thing. I would go here and I would look at these homes and the ones that kind of match their, um, match their criteria, I would select and I would just select all. I would go down here to save, new auto email, and I would choose the name or create a contact with them. I would put homes for your consideration because they, they're, they're looking. And, um, and they have to sign into the portal at least once in order to get the emails. But I wanted to show you, um, let's see. And that's gonna auto update on its own. Like you don't have to go in daily and do that for them. Nope, it seems I got one this morning. Can you see that? I got one this morning at 721. Mm -hmm. That's going out mm -hmm. to my clients that I've been working with for a while. They got one June 28th, June 27th. And what they see is this. So they see, hi, Carrie and Niella. Oh, this is somebody else I'm working with. View all listings. So anything new that pops up that morning or whenever before it triggers the mm -hmm. email, it'll pop up here in their email. Okay. Yep, and they can actually... They can actually go over here and like it, save as a favorite. If they probably wouldn't save that one, but they might, they might, um, they might like this this one, and so they can just go over here and save as a favorite, and then it notifies me that it's a favorite. Is that is that helpful for everybody? Yeah, thank you. I have yeah. no clue about this. Yep. Any questions? So these are ways to stay in touch with your database. Um, you can do, we have, we have scripts for care calls where you, where you just, and they're just what they sound like. You're calling because you care about somebody. One of my favorite things to say to my database is, hey, I'm, um, I was thinking about you. You were on my mind and I just needed to reach out and see how, how everything's going. And people love to know that you're thinking about them. I love that when somebody calls me and says, hey, I was just thinking about you. I feel so, so happy. Um, so that's one of the things we can do. Um, let me see what else I have. Now you might have a local and a not local database. I know Brittany, you have a not local database of quite a few people because of your other business. And so um, with your, you're gonna, when you reach out to them, it's gonna be the same kind of thing. And the conversation typically, I don't force real estate into my conversations. Um, people almost always know, people almost always ask me what's going on. How's, how's the market? I mean, Sometime in every conversation, somebody says, oh, you must be so slammed right now. I've heard it's a seller's market. And, and, I, and I say, I always say, you know what? I'm having so much fun now. Um, I'm helping a lot of sellers. I'm helping a lot of buyers, but I have always room for more. So if there's somebody you want me to help, I'd be delighted to. That's how I put that. Um, I don't ever want them to think I'm too busy. I don't ever want to give the impression that I'm so busy that I don't have room for more people, if that makes sense. Okay, and then um, I think it's really good to set a, right now, right now, um, some of us are taking a, a course called Bold, which is one, one morning a week on Thursdays for six weeks. And part of our Bold homework is to call, contact 100 people a week. So I wanted to explain, somebody asked me yesterday what the difference is between a contact pipeline and a lead. Um, so a contact is somebody when we in our contacts when we talk about contacts, we're talking about someone that we've had a two way two way in exchange, either by phone, by text, social media, where real estate has come up. One of the ways that I'm reaching my our our homework for bold is to reach 100 people a week. One of the ways I'm doing that, and I'm going to post that and I'll post that for this group. I'll send it out as an email. Um, is I'm sending an email each week to everybody in my database. And I'm saying, um, as a realtor, I am often asked for, for recommendations for vendors. Who have you worked with that you'd like to recommend? And then I give some ideas like a painters, contractors, plumbers, electricians, deck specialists, landscaping specialists, house cleaners, anything you can think of that has to do with the home. And people are responding to that. And that's a two-way conversation about real estate. And it reminds them that I'm in real estate. So that's one of my favorite things to do. Or, or I'll send out an email saying, hey, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm um, working on a project and I would like to know um, what your favorite restaurants are in Roswell or your favorite restaurants in your area or Buford. Um, what, what, 
who's your favorite hairstylist, those kinds of things. I'm always asking them questions like that. And they love, people love to, to share what they know. Um, and it's a way to, way to stay in contact with them. So I would set a goal for yourself to reach out to your database at least, and I'm talking about like you, you can do the, the calls, the DTD2, where you're calling the two, calling two people or calling the everyone whose last names end with those two letters and texting the other ones. But I would also set myself a goal to reach out to my database and on a regular basis in some form or fashion um, so that you're in contact with them all the time because nothing worse than you, you've forgotten to call somebody and you haven't talked to them in six months or three months. And next time you talk to them, they're like, oh, we bought a house. <laughs> and you think, wow, I missed out on that one. And for me, in order to avoid that pain, I like to assign a number to it. So I'll, I'll often go, well, you just burned ten thousand dollars candace i hope you had fun doing that because you did all you had to do is make a phone call make one more phone call during the day and you would have been able to provide your family with ten thousand dollars so that's how i that's how i set that up in my mind so that it's um it, it keeps me motivated to keep making those calls and making those contacts um any peters like any questions so far okay good andy peters likes to play a game um, one of the things when he likes to play a game that, um, if that he'll, he'll, he likes to meet people at a certain restaurant and here's a little tip for you. If, if you are going to meet people out, like you're going to have coffee, maybe you're going to set a day where you're scheduling coffees with your friends, um, or your, your database that are local and you have a favorite coffee place. Um, make sure you meet the owner, make sure you meet the servers, go in in advance and meet the servers. I would do a nice tip to whomever, and I would say, I'm gonna be meeting a lot of people here. I'd love it if you could save, I'm gonna meet them on Tuesday. I'd love it if you could save this table right here for me. And, um, and I'll, you know, I'll be, we'll be ordering lots of coffee or we might be ordering lunch or whatever it is you're gonna do. And um, get, so that when you walk in, they're like, hey, Candace, it's so nice to see you. It makes you, it makes you, it gives you some credibility. And then when you're meeting your people there, um, there's a the game that Andy likes to play is if you had five, if I gave you five dollars and you had to spend it or give it back, what would you do? And if and then you and you say, then what if I gave you ten dollars and you had to spend it or give it back, what would you do? And you go on up to like a hundred dollars and you play that game. People like to play that. Um, another game I like to play is um, the lottery game. And I, I, I use the lottery game for a lot of different reasons. I use the lottery game to help people think bigger about themselves. Travis, you know this one, right? Um, but it's if you woke up tomorrow morning and you won the lottery and um, you won $500 million and after taxes, you get to keep 300 million, what would you do? And you find out a lot about people by asking those kinds of questions, the things that they dream of and the things that they they want to do for other people. Uh, it's a really good way to get to know people. Um, any questions so far? Okay, so, so let me go through. A database is a collection of names and contact information. A contact is somebody that you've had a two-way conversation with about real estate. Pipeline is somebody who's raised their hand and said, I'm going to be buying or selling within so many months or next year. Sometimes people are going to buy next year. That's pipeline. A lead is someone that you've met who either knows somebody or, or is somebody who's going to be selling. And those leads get added to your pipeline. It can get very confusing, but I hope that clears it up a little bit. Any questions about those? So that's just terminology. So the biggest thing I would say about your database is just remember that your database is your gold mine. Um, I've, I've, I've heard this said, and I love this, and it's, what's it like to be in your tribe? So is your tribe neglected? And they, you, you think about them, but you don't contact them, or is your tribe regularly receiving something of value from you? Even if it's a, if you, even if it's a care phone call saying, I'm thinking about you, how are you doing? Um, tell me what's going on in your life, um, or let's meet for coffee. So that's, that's the most important thing about your database is just to, to think about how, how you want them to feel by knowing you. And um, 
I've been on both sides of that. I've I've been the when I think about my tribe, I've been the the uh, person who's neglected my tribe tremendously, <clears throat> and I've been the person who nurtures my tribe tremendously. And I can tell you, nurturing your tribe is a lot more um, fulfilling. And you deepen those contacts that you have with people. And everybody, everybody that I meet has a story to tell. And so, so if you look at if you look at everybody you meet as as just solid solid gold for their soul, for their person, for who they are and for their story. Um, you start to you start to make those connections with people that are just so they're just awesome. And then when it turns out that there's a real estate transaction involved in it, um, that's even better because then you know that they are your raving fan. They will give you reviews and um, they will refer refer people to you. So that's everything I have about database. Are there any questions specifically? Um, if you don't have 100 people in your database, that's your goal. You want to have 100 people in your database as fast as you can get there. And then you want to start adding people to your database regularly. And from your database, uh, you want to make those contacts, which is a two-way conversation about real estate. Um, however you do it, whether you're asking for vendors or, or uh, you know, as a realtor, I'm often asked about this area and what the best place is in this area. So um, where do you like to shop? Where's the best food market? Who has the best deal on whatever? What restaurants do you like? Those kinds of, those kinds of contacts. And then, um, and then you wanna start adding people to your pipeline as well. And when you make a certain number of contacts each week, say, it's, say, you're, say you're making 15 contacts per week, you're probably gonna add about one person to your pipeline. Because we know that it takes about 16 contacts to a closing. Does that make sense? Okay, you all are so quiet this morning. Is it early? Oh yeah, I woke up at like 8.15. <laughs> well, anyway, um, anyway, thank you. If you have any questions this week, just reach out to me. I'll, I'll send out that email template that I use for the vendors. Um, so you can start using that and, and reaching out to your contacts and have a great week, everybody, or have a great day. I'm gonna to talk to you tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning, Thank you. Tomorrow, tomorrow morning, we're going to do some role play. So um, I'll be glad to be the realtor. But if anybody wants to practice being the realtor, this is a safe zone. This is the no judgment zone. So it's a good, good place to kind of exercise your chops. So um, I'll ask for volunteers. And um, if nobody raises their hand to be the realtor, I still need somebody to be the buyer or the seller. Okay. And okay. you all can choose what you want to role play. Okay, thank you. Thanks so much thank for being you. here, everybody. Bye. Bye.